Good morning and welcome to the NCAA Women's Final Four Pre-National Championship Press Conference featuring the South Carolina Gamecocks. At this time, we'll open up the floor for questions for Coach Staley. Thank you. <laughs> we'll start right here with Jonathan. Move to our back. See ya. I see ya. Thanks. Good morning, Don. Jonathan okay. Tannewall, the Philadelphia Inquirer. Um, how much does last year's game, if you were to study it on film or whatever it may be, does it help this year because you guys have changed so much and so have they, or does it not matter and you just focus on Iowa's film from this year? Yeah, I haven't watched last year's game. So the focus is on this team this year. We're going to go to the state to our left, second row, if you could raise your hand. Hello, Dominique Patrick, Rising Media Stars. Um, on a lighter note, you had a really cool moment with Aaliyah Boston last night. It seemed like it brought you so much joy just to give her all of her credit, accolades, hype her up. Um, can you walk me through all the feels of that moment, what you were feeling? I mean, as, as, you know, as a coach that, you know, I've had a pretty successful um, playing career. Um, and once I left playing, I, I totally just locked in the coaching and being the best coach that I could be. And it's super fulfilling um, to know that you could be a part of, you know, I mean, your players' lives um, where they, they can fulfill, like, um, you know, imagined dreams and unimagined dreams. And to see her in such a, I mean, she was playing in that game last year during, you know, this time. And to, to, to have her flip it and be really good at it, um, I mean, it's, I mean, it does the heart well. Like, it, it fills my heart with so much joy. And she's really good at it. Like, she's really, I don't, some things, some, some people say you can't be really good at two things. She's really, she's really good at two things. And I'm probably missing out on some other stuff that she's really great at as well. But, you know, I'm giving you what I see and what you all see. Um, she's going to be a star in this space. Going to go to our right, Lindsay. Hey, Don. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Um, going unique, going undefeated is a unique thing. There have only been nine teams that have done it previously. I wondered when you did lock in to coaching, was there an undefeated team that you watched and you thought, man, that would be incredible if I could lead a team to that or a favorite player? Bree said she loved BG's undefeated run at Baylor. And Raven mentioned Crystal Dangerfield when she went on one undefeated team at UConn. Um, no, no, really not. I, I mean, I don't really. When I when I look at basketball, I don't look at wins and losses. I look at how things are being executed, and allow the wins to take or the losses to take care of themselves. Um, and I, and as much as you bring up, like. An undefeated season, it doesn't it doesn't feel like it because I mean we've played some bad basketball that made it feel like we lost. So it's, it's those kind of moments that keep us just locked into the task at hand of playing, just trying to play great basketball, just trying to make make great decisions out there to increase our chances of of, of winning. And it's you know I mean it's it's really hard to to believe that we're undefeated, like, because I, I don't feel it. Like, and as a coaching staff, we, we have to pinch ourselves to even, to even know that's true because deep down we, we, we see what our shortcomings are every single day. Our next three questions will be Ben, Kareem, and then Chantel. So, I'm sorry, Andrea, Ben, and then Kareem. Andrea Adelson with the ESPN.com. Don here. Um, I would love your perspective on this because there's always a lot of debate for players and coaches whether a championship is needed to cement a legacy and you've gone through that as a player and obviously as a coach. How do you feel about that because it feels like it's an endless debate about whether those championships are, are needed? Um, yeah, I was really good in college. Never won a championship. Man, you got to win a championship. You got to win a championship. So, and that's, that's me personally. Like, I had a great career, but it's always, did you win a championship? We went to the Final Four three times. We never won. So, um, I, I, I do think 
And I agree with uh, Stewie when it comes to winning the championship. I mean, she's she's if, if we're gonna if we're gonna we're gonna talk about goats. Like I think she's the goat to be able to win four national championships um, and the BMVP. I think she was MVP all four times. If Caitlin wins the championship. She's pretty damn good. Like, yeah, she's a coach. <laughs> I mean, she's pretty damn good regardless. But, you know, winning the championship would seal the deal. I, I hope to the dear Lord she doesn't. <laughs> We're going to stay to our right towards the back. Ben, if you could raise your hand so Coach can see you. Hey, Ben Pickman from The Athletic. Um, a question about C. Vivian Stringer. Um, you wrote a few years back that to both you and Coach Law, she shared landmarks of her journey but still gave you space to – not just go down her path. Um, can you just elaborate a little bit on that? What did she tell you, and how did she allow you to still carve out your own space? I mean, Co Coach Stringer's been doing this um, for a long time. I mean, she was the example of, of what black coaches had um, in looking at her journey, looking at her success, um, and, looking at, and looking at her coverage, um, looking at all the things that she had to endure. Um, so, you know, she – and she often calls. Like, I, I talked to Coach Stringer probably about two or three weeks ago. She called and just kind of congratulated us on the season that we were having um, and to pour into us. Like, she, did, she doesn't do it every day. Uh, but every so often when you get a, when you get a call from a legendary coach – um, it gives you inspiration, it gives you stamina, it gives you what you need in that moment to have the strength to continue on with, with whatever challenges that you're faced. And she's always welcoming. If, you, if I have something to, you know, to run by her, always. And always appreciative that you know, I would use her as a resource. So it, it is that. It's not, she doesn't overwhelm you with things. She allows you to, the space to grow and to learn and to be there when, when you're at a crossroad to give you some wisdom. Washington Post. Um, Raven has talked so much about her journey over this past year. I'm curious, what stood out to you about her growth, not only on the court, but also as a person? Um, I mean, Raven is finding herself on and off the court. Like, she was, she was one that didn't really talk a whole lot. You really couldn't see her personality. And I do think with the successes that she's been having on the court, she feels a lot more comfortable to, you know, to share who she is, you know, the fun loving. Like, Raven's never had a bad day. Like, she's, how you see her play in the game is, exactly what she brings to the court every single day. We say, okay, we're going to go 50%. She doesn't know 50%. She, she goes all out. So the journey of her um, having a voice, and no matter what that voice is, like she's in, a, she's in such a, a, like a learning phase of her life. She's open to learning, not just basketball, just history. Um, she's learning what she likes. Um, she's learning a, a pathway of, of who she wants to be, and she's unafraid to, you know, to go out there to, to say or do some things that it will rock you a little bit, it will make you laugh, but it is, it is who she's becoming. Like, and I, and I, I love that about young people to be unafraid to say what you want to say, what's on your heart to say. And, and, it, and it might be the wrong thing, but we all have been 18 to 22 year olds. And we all have said some things that, you know, may not be the right thing. You live, you learn. And, and I, I just hope that throughout every young person's journey in this space, um, to be able to express themselves and to not be vilified or, you know, because, you know, even to this day, we say things that, you know, can be, you know, can be deemed hurtful to other people, but it's, it's not in that context. It's not, and we need to, we need to look at people for 
you know, their their entire journey. And, and if you could speak to, if you could speak to someone's entire journey, you'll find that your knee jerk reaction to what someone says isn't that deep at all, isn't that hurtful at all. It's just a perspective. We're gonna to stay to our, <clears throat> our right in the back. We'll, our next three questions will be in order. Chantel, David from The Post, Nancy, and then our fourth will be Doug. Well, Sean. Uh, Sean Hurd at Anscape. Um, hey, coach, Sean. How was, doing, how was it going, Coach? Um, yesterday you said the key to your third quarter was, uh, it wasn't magic, it was about playing simple, good basketball. Uh, I'm curious, has that been Always how you approach adjustments during your coaching career, is that something that you had to learn? No, I haven't always been that way. Good Lord. <laughs> Good Lord, I've had to lay down my religion a few times in the half court. Um, I mean, half time. Um, but you, I mean, you approach each team um, in how they receive information. You deliver it in how they receive it because ultimately you, you just want them to get the message. And sometimes we as coaches mess up the message with how, how angry we could get, how competitive we can get in those moments. Um, but it was really no yelling, no screaming, no. You could see clearly what we needed to do um, to make the adjustments. And it was just to simplify, just pass to the open person. Don't hold the ball more than a second. Like, have a plan when you catch the ball. Um, if you want to score, have a plan. Um, if you don't, pass the ball. Get the ball to Camilla. Get, you know, give her an easy look. Um, knock down a three here or there when you're open. Very, very simple. And I think, you know, by us coming out, making our first shot, it ignited what we were able to do on the defensive side of the basketball. We, we definitely had to clean up our, our, our ball screen defense. We definitely had to apply a lot more pressure to um, the initiator of their offense. And once that happened, it, we found ourselves getting a little bit some easy buckets and getting out in transition and just putting NC State back on their heels a little bit. Because they had us on our heels you know, for two quarters. We'll take our next question from David from the Post. David, if you could raise your hand. Uh, David Kloniger, Post and Courier. Uh, Dawn, did you ever, when Raven came in, did you ever have to have any kind of specific talk with her, point guard to point guard, and say, this is what they're going to need you to do? There'll be a time where everybody's looking for you for answers? Or was that pretty ingrained with her throughout her high school days? Yeah, I mean, great Raven came from a great high school program, um, great AAU program. Um, and I know that a lot of people want her to be a scoring point guard. Right, she's not. The, she wasn't developed to be a scoring point guard. She was developed to be a, a a consummate point guard. That you know, this is what you do when it's time to pass. It's time to pass. When it's time to score, it's time to score. And I think sometimes, you know, you know, whether it's social media, whether it's family members that want her to take that next jump, and and she will, you know. But her mentality all has always been a pass first. That is her passion, that is, that is her development. And then you have to teach her um, opportunities for her to score. And that's where we are now. Like, um, because, of, because of what happened last year in the Final Four, it kind of expedited it a little bit because she, she has the urge now. Like, she wants to break out into, you know, being, being an opportunistic scorer. Um, so I think, by the time um, she ends her career, she's going to have the best of both worlds when it comes to that. We'll take our next question from Nancy. Please raise your hand, Nancy. We can get the microphone to you. Nancy Armour, USA Today. Um, Don, Raven had just said that what happened last year almost made her want or made her want to quit basketball, and that she watched she has watched that game. She said probably more than a hundred times. Yeah. I'm wondering what conversations you had with her, and did she ever come to you and say, "I don't think I want to do this anymore"? And, and how did you help her get over that hump? No, I mean she didn't. She didn't. She didn't. She didn't tell me that. Um, 
I, I think when you're embarrassed, I think when when we lost, like all of that, it makes you question. I mean, the game will do that to you. You know, anything that you love and you're passionate about will make you question it at some point. And that is what you need for your breakthrough. And if if you don't have enough, enough um, just power, strength, um, your breakthrough will never happen. Brad Raymond's going to be a great player because she was able to break through that moment and catapult her into that next level. Now, now she's going to be tested again somewhere along the line. Like we all, we all are, are, are given life tests. You either, you either pass them and move on to the next test or you keep retaking them. Think about it. Think about everybody's life. That what is the very thing that that you can't get over? You keep seeing it time and time again. And then when you hurdle that, you move on to the next one. So I think Raven is is at that place. And she's young. It's a little bit harder for us as, as grown ups. She's a little bit younger. I mean, as you uh, the more uh, the more young you are. Hopefully, the more people in your life can help you navigate through that, and you're not as stubborn um, to give up on something. So, I mean, Raven's in a good place. You know, she's been given what she's needed to to learn in a good moment, in a good young moment in her career that's helped her grow. We'll take our next question, Doug, and then Daniel, you'll be fo you'll follow. Hey, Coach Doug Feinberg, the AP. I know you're a fan of watching basketball games. You've said many times you sit back in the couch and the options this year have been so much better than years past. When you think about the game tomorrow, which caps off a historic year with attendance, record ratings, everything else, star players, how great is it that it's you guys going for an undefeated season against a generational player in Caitlin Clark in Iowa that has really seemed to capture the attention of a lot of new fans? I think it's great. I think it's, you know, it's, it's a monumental um, game for our game. And we're very fortunate to be a part of it. Um, we get to witness firsthand the, you know, the, the legacy of Cla Caitlin Clark. You know, is you watch her, you prep for her. Um, you, can't ha you can't help but to really love how she dissects the game. You love how she executes. Um, I mean, it's, it's simple. Like, her game is simple, but yet, like, powerful. Like, how do you, how, how, how do you defend fundamental basketball with offense, with fundamental defense? You, you can't. They, she's going to win every time. So, I mean, you, you, you got to show her different looks in order for, for her to, not settle in and picking you apart, um, but we also we also have to play our side of the ball. We gotta we gotta defend. We gotta put some points on the scoreboard. Um, I do think it will be a you know a, I hope it's the most watched game. I mean we've I've been a part of witnessing from the outside looking in to the most watched game. Um, it's it's gonna be fun to hopefully be a part of it, like in the mix of things. And I hope that everybody gets exactly what they want out of it. And I just hope the viewers, the people in attendance will, will take tomorrow's moment and carry it um, to the rest of, uh, um, the, rest of the, the history of our sport. And, and, and hopefully we can, we can keep the eyeballs and demand where it needs to be. Stay to our left. Daniel, please proceed. Dan Zakrzewski, OutKick coach. You just talked about, you know, what a massive weekend this is, obviously, for women's basketball, women's sports in general. One of the major issues facing women's sports right now is the debate discussion topic about the inclusion of transgender athletes, biological males in women's sports. I was wondering if you would tell me your position on that issue. Um, damn, you got deep on me, didn't you? I, I, 
I'm on the, I mean, I'm on the, the opinion of, of, if you're a woman, you should play. If you consider yourself a woman or, and you want to play sports or, or vice versa, you should be able to play. That's, that's my opinion. You want me to go deeper? Do you, do you think uh, transgender women should be able to participate that, that, That's your question you want basketball. me to ask. I mean, you want to ask, so I'll, I'll give you that. Yes. Yes. So now the barnstorm of people are going to flood my timeline and be a distraction to me on one of the biggest uh, days of, of, of our game. And I'm okay with that. I really am. Daniel, we're going to stay to the front row. If you can just pass it down to in the pink. Coach, Hannah Burton, Sports Capital Journalism. We've talked about the mindset that Raven was in after that loss last year. Um, she mentioned that when she was really struggling, L.A. kind of took her in, really helped her grow her faith, helped her kind of come out of that place. As a coach, what does it mean to be able to see those kind of relationships foster and grow through something like that? That's what it's all about. That's why you play a sport. You know, obviously you play a sport to win, but the relationships and experiences that you, you know, that you, that you have, you know, with your sisters um, is, is what um, will carry you. Like the, the, the fact that LA would take her, take her to church um, and to find answers to why things happen the way they have because that's what you, that's what she was searching for. She was searching for an answer. Why, you know, why was I put in this situation? Why did this happen? Um, and that's the best place for her to find her answers. And you know, I, I actually I actually knew about that. I actually knew about um, because it was it became part of our conversations. You know, Raven's very impressionable. Um, so I'm glad she chose the right person to help her navigate through a space that was really hard for her. Our next question, Cam, if you could raise your hand so I can get the microphone to you. Hey, Don, Cameron with The Athletic. I want to go back to Aaliyah Boston. And I know because you're playing or prepping for games, you don't get to watch the ESPN, bro ESPN broadcast a lot. But what is, when you look at all the ratings and everything that's going on with this tournament, having people like Aaliyah, Cheney, Andrea on that, on that set, what does that say or do for young women who also want to come in basketball, who may not want to get into coaching, but they want to stay in the game? I think with, with um, Elle, Andrea, Shanae, and now Aaliyah, Carolyn Peck, uh, black women holding it down, like holding it down, taking it to another level. It's quite remarkable, and for Aaliyah to be a part of that, um, she knows. She knows now what she's reaching for because she's seeing some of the best analysts that I've ever been around. And it's not, it's not, they're giving credit where credit is due with every single team that was participating um, here at the Final Four. That's not always the case. Um, they're breaking it down to, this, to its simplest form where everybody that is tuned in can really understand our game. Um, they appear on other talk shows and they are, they, are, <laughs> they are lifting our game up in spaces that are, you know, that are just, you know, male dominant. Um, and I think some of these, male talk shows don't really know about the fabric of our game. They don't know the inner workings. They don't, they don't even know how to break the game down. They're just going off of probably what somebody's telling them to say or social media. But to hear them break it down, and I don't even like to watch it, but, but I, I tune in and I watch. Like, I'm listening. I'm working and listening. That's my background noise. And sometimes I have to stop. 
And I'm just like, damn, like, this, this is great. Can I find some strategy in this? Like, can, we, can, can we really do this? I mean, it's awesome. It's intentional. It's intentional. Like, somebody chose that group of women um, to uplift our game, and they're doing a magnificent job. It's different. It's different than years past. It's di a lot different. Like, it's colorful. It's intentional. Each and every, each and every uh, um, dynamic to our game, and they're doing it beautifully. I'm gonna go to our right, Alexa. If you could raise your hand, we can get the microphone to you. Alexa Philpoo, ESPN. Donna knows a quick turnaround from yesterday. Have you noticed anything so far, just being around your team? Uh, if players are extra relishing in this opportunity to play Iowa, um, I know we've talked about Raven too and what that meant to her. Anything you've noticed so far? Do you anticipate that they will be even more motivated to get the job done this time? You know, they're pretty motivated. You know, we just had our film session um, this morning, and they're all locked in. It wasn't wasn't daycare this morning. It was. <laughs> And I don't know if it's just because they just woke up, um, but they're locked in. Like they, you ask them questions, they really understand what we need to do to win, um, which is pretty cool to see that dynamic from this team. But, but I, I would say ever since we got into the NCAA tournament, there's, there's a lot more focused than the regular season, meaning when it's time to prep. There's a lot more, you know, writing notes. There's a lot more recall. Um, so um, they're more locked in, and, you know, hopefully they can get it done. <clears throat> Excuse me. On our left-hand side, Jeff, if you could raise your hand, we can get the microphone to you. Yeah, Coach, uh, Jeff Linder, Cedar Rapids Gazette. Um, it's a long season. Uh, kids are tired. Kids are nicked up. At this point, how do you balance – preparation and, and rest? Yeah, great question. I mean, at this point, rest is equally as important as working out. We, we won't do anything. We're going to walk through um, the hour that we get here. And then I think there's an open practice um, that our players will probably get juiced up for. Um, and they'll move a little bit quicker than what we're going to do uh, um, in our in our closed practice. Um, Tough game, like I, you know, at this point, like when we were, when we won in, I think 2017, we just did a walkthrough. We just did a walkthrough, um, and I, did, and somebody told me, no, nah, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> 2022 walkthrough, <laughs> walkthrough, walkthrough, like. They're locked in, you know, and and there's not very much prep time because you get an hour on the court, you get a 50 minute open practice, you can't really do anything. So it's it's more about um, film sessions and you know talking to individual players about what we need them to, how we need to play and execute. Take our final question from the back, Christy. If you could raise your hand, we can get the microphone to you. Hey, Don. Christy Winter Scott, Big Ten Network. When you're looking at a team like Iowa and how Hannah Stolke played in the game yesterday, what is going to be the biggest challenge in containing her and the paint, but also Iowa as a whole, and flip it over to how you want to initiate on the offensive end and be the point of contact in terms of attacking the paint on your own? Yeah, Stolke is uh, um, it's, it's, it's a matchup that we got to win. Like, we got to win that one. Um, first, you got you to gotta run and transition. I mean, she gets out. Her and Martin, they get out. They get out. They are determined. And it was, you know, I will run for a layup. That's the mentality. Um, and then what she's, what she's able to do in the half court, I mean, she puts you back on your heels. We certainly have to use our length. We got to make her play through us, and she doesn't mind that at all. Um, and then on the flip side of that, we have to make her guard us. She's going to have to guard not one, not two, not three, four. We got four or five legitimate post players 
that she's going to see and have to guard, and they all are different. So, um, I mean, Iowa's a challenge. They're playing their best basketball. They're playing inspired. They're playing like they want to win a national championship. Um, so are we. So I think it's a crash course of of who's going to have the better run, who's going to be who's going to be able to execute when it's time to execute. Coach, I want to thank you for your time today. Best thank of luck you. again for tomorrow.